Good afternoon, and welcome to this session of the Queen's Roundtable. I'm Evangelist Prophetess Valerie Ammons, and I am indeed glad to be here today to break bread with you. So without any further ado, we're going to go to the throne. Almighty God, in your precious Son, Jesus' name, God, if and when I said something that did not glorify you, that did not edify you, and I misrepresented you, God, I repent right now in Jesus' name. Satan, I serve you notice right now. I speak destruction to you. You are under my feet. Holy Ghost, you are welcome with me. You are welcome to lead and guide me and to enter into God's grace and to enter into God's heavens and, and to enter into his presence. And God, I thank you in Jesus' name for this platform. And I thank you for all of your children all over the world. In Jesus' name, amen. And again, welcome to this session of the Queen's Round Table. I have some good information for you today. And I had went and did a survey after I had seen a show. So let's get right into it. So the topic of this session is the qualities that a female slash queen will accept from a boyfriend slash mate. And I want to keep in mind that the scripture is Proverbs 18, 22, which says, Whosoever findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. So, now, now I was saying, before I was watching TV, and I was watching the Animal Kingdom, and we, we really watched that a lot at our house, and uh, God pointed out um, how the female animals only allow the strongest, the most dominant um, male animal to mate with her. She has strict qualifications, uh, and, and the male must have to be um, enduring, he has to be strong, he has to be wise, and for this opportunity, the, the male, they will fight to the death to mate with her. As I've always said, we set the tone. So we're setting the tone, even in animal kingdom, I mean, that females are setting the tone. They are setting and looking at the qualifications that the male brings to the table to mate with her. Only the strong, only the most dominant one, only the most fierce one will she allow to mate with her. So then I watched how the males, you know, will demonstrate, you know, their strength and their endurance and their power and their intellect to have the opportunity to mate with the female. And I've seen some of the males, they'll fight to the death in, in, to have an opportunity to mate. I've seen a peacock just put his feathers all up in an array of beauty. And he and how colorful his his feathers are, and he struts around the yard, going back and forth, uh, and it may be two or three of them, wanting uh, strutting their uh, their dominance and their power and their strength, so they will be chosen by the female. They will be allowed to mate with her. And, and queens, we have this 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 awesome thing, you know, where we. I'm looking for the strongest male, but in animal kingdom, but what about for us, for human beings? I, I was watching Steve Harvey's show, and he had a woman who was, um, she was trying to find out, find the right man for her. Well, that was the issue then, because finding the right man is not our jobs. As it says in Proverbs 18 and 22, that a man findeth a wife. So that means that we are to be sought after, we are to be looked for, and we are to be um, adorned and, 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 and just showed how important we are to them. So we should be having ourselves, you know, ready um, to be that, that one that they are after, you know. So we want to be seen as that beautiful queen. So we will, we will ask, uh, we will, we want to just sh show how beautiful, how strong, how intelligent we are. So I said this, I asked multiple other queens this question. What qualifications 
Will you accept in a mate? Now, since we're not looking, we, we, the first thing we should do is we should ask God to send us a mate. And then we want to be able to, to, dis, to uh, discern which one it is because Satan sends gifts too. So we want to say, okay, what are the qualifications that God would have sent me and what will I accept? And I got multiple answers. And we know God won't send us any junk, but we know Satan is here to kill, steal, and destroy. So I was, you know, I was just wondering, one of the ladies told me that one of the qualifications, no, multiple ladies told me that the main qualification that they was looking for in a man was that he would love God. Like he loved God. Uh, himself. He would love God like he loved himself. There would be nothing that uh, him and God did not talk about. And that he, they wanted a strong man, meaning strong in mind, strong in spirit, strong in his soul, and strong in his body. Because a man is to be our protector. And they wanted a man who would not cheat. And I talked to African-American women. I talked to Caucasian women. I talked to older women. I talked to younger women. I talked to married women. And I talked to women that weren't married. And the, one of the main qualifications was that he be God-fearing, God-loving. So then they wanted all of the other things that I mentioned for him to be obedient to God, for him to be... Um, um, to not to be a cheater. And one of the ladies even said that she needed to be a good lover. So we didn't want to leave out anything, and I appreciate all the ladies that answered the questions for me. And all of them had the same thing that the, it's basically in the animal kingdom had. They're looking for the same thing. The difference between us and animals is that we are able to reason. We, are have, we can put logic and reasoning in our decisions. So when we're looking for that one, not, I'm sorry, when we are, are looking at the qualifications, and what will we accept? See, ladies, we need to do some background checking on who, what are the potential mates for us. I'm not having, and I did not say anything about um, um, having sex. I'm talking about courting because courting is where you have an intent to marry. Dating is when you have the intent to just get what you can get. So we, we have to beware of one thing first. And what is us? What are our values? What, is our, what are our standards? What, of our, what, of, what are our characteristics? What do we bring to the table? See, you got to first do you. You got to first look at you, who you are. Are you a strong woman that you can stand on your own? Or are you a woman that needs this, uh, this, this somebody constantly uplifting you, encouraging you, empowering you? Or do you know how to empower yourself through first the Word of God, through your walk with God? And you bring something to the table. So you want to know who you are. How do you know what you want if you don't know who you are? What qualifications will you settle for? Will you accept if you don't know what qualifications you have. So first look at you. Investigate you. Interrogate you. See who you are. See what you've accomplished. See what your goals are. If you don't have goals, would you not, will you marry some guy who doesn't have goals? More than likely, because you're not setting a standard. I remember one session we did, if you don't the only reason we don't, do not succeed is that we do not plan and we do not execute. So now, what are your goals? What is your plan for success in life? So you want to make, because that's every little girl's dream. We played house before we played anything. We had a husband and we had a house and we had some children. But what qualified us to be a mother, 
a wife? What, what have we learned? What do we bring to the table? First, I looked at me. And when I was first called myself dating, I knew nothing about dating. I knew nothing about me. I didn't know what me wanted or where me was going. And to be honest, because we are not teaching our young princesses to how to be beautiful queens. That first has to start with us. And was I taught what being a princess was? Was I taught what being a queen was? I was only taught um, the typical saying that we've heard. Um, if you think you want to have, if you want to have a man or you want to have sex, come talk to me. Okay, really? I'm going to do that. I'm going to tell you that, right? So no, that, that's not happening. So then you listen to your friends. And your friends give you inaccurate information, and that's where a lot of us make inaccurate decisions. We do not look at a man and say, what is his qualification? What do we look for first? Is he fine? Oh, my God, he is fine. He is so handsome. Oh, he, he has a great physique. Um, you know, he got a fine car. But do we ever look to see about his soul? Do we ever look to see about his spirit? Do we ever do any background checks to see if we are compatible? Do we have the same value system? Do we have the same goals? Do we ever look for that? No, we have that outer appearance that attracts the eye, and then your mouth starts salivating and say, oh, girl, he is so fine. Oh, my God. Are you not fine? Are you not beautifully and wondrously made? So in our, in our acceptance of a man, we have to be looking for the same things that we have. You know, is he God-fearing? Can we worship and pray together? Does he really love the Lord? Because his actions are going to show you that. Is he responsible? How does he live his life? How does he dress? Is his pants covering his butt? Is he, is he covering up his underwear or is he showing his wear? See, underwear is under the clothes and show wear is something that you show, but underwear definitely belongs under the clothes. So are we accepting a man because uh, he's a part of the fad? He walks around with his pants below his butt. Is that the man you're looking for? I should hope not. I should hope that you're looking for one who has some pride and some dignity and some integrity about himself. That's what we should be. Our quali qualifications should be. Is he educated? Can he communicate? Can we communicate together? Is he intelligent? Can we have an intelligent conversation without every word being a cuss word? Can we sit down and have a meeting of the minds and not the loins? You know, I, you know, I saw where um, a young lady had wrote about the, her loins is her weapon. No, your brain is your weapon. Your brain is your weapon. Your heart is your weapon. Your love and your compassion is your weapon, never your loins. What is his value system? I mean, you know, what will he accept and not accept? I mean, is, will, is, in, in when things get rough, is he going to fall? Uh, is he going to turn to selling dope because things are rough? Or is he going to stay with God? Are we going to stay on our knees together and accomplish the things that, that, that abundant life that God has for us? What? Is he going to fall? And are we going to be, are we going to fall with him or are we going to be there to be an uplifting um, partner or, or, or a wife? Uh, is when we fall, is he going to be there to be that uplifting and empowering husband? So these are things that we should be look for, what, looking for. What does he think about marriage? Is he just wanting a one night stand? Or is he wanting a couple night stand? Or do he just want to come live with you and, um, you know, as my grandmother would say, um, have his cake and eat it too without any commitment. Is he committable? I mean, commitment, you know, not committable to, you know, to the insane asylum, but committed to you. Is he committable to you? Okay, and just you? 
because a lot of the women said they didn't want a man that cheated. They didn't want a man that, that ran around. They didn't want a man that sold drugs. They wanted a man who was educated, who was a hard worker. That's where they looked for his strength at. He didn't look for it because he could beat up somebody. He looked for his strength in his intellect, in his brain, not in his loins, but in his brain and in his spirit. What would he, what would he go to do, you know, for his children a righteous, in righteousness? So what is his history? Has he ever been married before? Um, do you know about him being uh, a womanizer? You know, because everything that looks good to you is not good for you. So what qualities are you, or will you accept in a mate? I'm talking about a mate that's going to be forever, as long as you live. I don't I'm not talking about a mate that's here today and gone tomorrow. That's not a mate. That's a friend. That's an acquaintance. You know, um, that might even be named a sugar daddy. We want husbands, righteous husbands. Husbands, we want to set the tone, empower the atmosphere to have that abundant life that Jesus came for us to have. But if we settle for a little bit, all you're going to get is a little bit because you do not demand, you do not command anything else. So that's all you're going to get. If your man is beating you, I doubt that's the man that God sent you. If the man is cheating on you, I doubt that's the man that God sent you. I doubt that God would send you anything other than a loving, committed man that you can have um, raised children with, raise uh, uh, the generations, the future with. And, and, you know, I just want to say something about the seed. You know, Satan comes for our seed uh, because he knows that. And let me read this. Acts 3 and 22. And you are heirs of the prophets and of the covenant God made with your fathers. He said to Abraham, through your offsprings, all people on earth will be blessed. He is coming for that blessing because he do not, he does not want you to be a vessel for God. He does not, Satan does not want you to do that. So you want to have a strong man so you and he can produce a strong seed. That's the commonality between the animal, the female animal and us as human beings. Our commonality is that we want a strong seed to survive and to build the future. We want to have that strong husband that, is st that we are standing together as one. Because when, when we come together as one, we are a force to be reckoned with. We are so powerful when we come together as one. But we don't want, we want that balance. We want that balance. We want to be game changers, as my pastor Leo and April Davis say. We are game changers. We will change the atmosphere. We will change this world to be a righteous world. If everyone has a, a know who they are and what to look for in a mate, what to accept in a mate. When a man is looking for a good thing, as the word says, when he finds a wife, he finds a good thing. He is looking for a woman who is not easy because those are not the women they take home to mama. They take them to the hotel and, or anywhere they can. You got to feel that good about yourself, queen, that I am so important and I am so good and I am so worthy. I am the one that's worthy to go home to mama, to be met by mama. I am the one that he'll look in his eyes. He will see the beauty of God because we are God's beauty. We are God's compassion. Our precious commodity is us, our DNA that comes from God. We are God's love. We are God's um, heart. We are God's emotion. We are God's gentleness. 
We are God's softness. And together with this strong man that's standing together with us, we are standing side by side. We are walking down the road together. There is no dark that can penetrate us and will stay on us because the righteousness of God and the blood of Jesus will cover us. The anointing of God is so powerful. It will keep the darts from penetrating our spirits. And our spirit will always lead us. When our spirits, my husband's spirit and my spirit join together, we'll think like each other. We'll see like each other. We'll walk like each other. When I'm not with him, as it says in um, Proverbs 31 and 10 about the virtuous woman, he will be, when I'm walking somewhere, people will see him through me. And when he's gone somewhere, people will see him, me in him. This is, this is what I'm talking about, these this, this qualities that is nothing but pure, beautiful, unadulterated, agape love. It is the love that a man and a woman can share that is so beautiful that love making is, is the most outstanding, the most beautiful Thing that you can do together to bring such bring forth a beautiful offspring not brought forth out of cheating because that person is going to get hurt not brought forth out of lies because that child is going to be hurt but brought forth out of love out of joy out of happiness out of compassion out of meekness and gentleness and integrity and dignity we want to raise those types of children. Those children are our future. And we are the role models, queen. Do not accept anything other than what you have investigated, what you have interrogated, and what you have done a background check on. What does these qualities mean to you? What will I accept? I will accept nothing but the best qualities that God has given man. And those, uh, those qualities are love. <clears throat> those qualities are strength. Those qualities are power. Those qualities are knowing who you are. And knowing who you have is so beautiful. There is no reason for you to stray. And I, I had this gentleman said on Facebook that if a man strays, it's because it's something he's not getting at home. Please do not ever, ever, ever attack a, uh, and make a wife be the slacker. Because a wife, if you have did your homework, kings and queens, you have did your homework and you have interrogated, investigated, and, and did background checks to find out if these qualities meet with my qualities, there will never be a reason to stray because you will be so in love with the qualities that you share together to make you that one, that one unit, that one, that one home, that one family that is walking in the admonition of God, that's walking in righteousness, and that will only accept the best because God gives, is the giver of every good and perfect gift. It comes from God. And if my husband and I and my family are walking together, God said he would, he would give the desires of the person that diligently seek him. So what would he do for a family that is diligently seeking him together? That, that he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive if you stick together. But you, you have to know. You have to counsel. Go sit in counsel with the ministers of your church. And if you don't have a church, then get a church as you according. Find out, queens, what he wants, how, how he plans to get it. And if they meet your qualifications, then that is the man that God has sent to you. 
And if you still want confirmation, ask God to send you a word. Ask God to clarify. Ask God, but never leave the presence of God. Never leave God's love and his peace and his joy because God will let you know who he has sent for you. And it will be a beautiful, beautiful light that you will see in this person when you see that his qualities and your qualities come together as one. And you will walk into happiness, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, humbleness. You will walk in there together. And nothing, nothing, nothing will harm you and peace be unto you.